So some background information on John Brown. His family was really religious. They had strong beliefs on abolitionism. They were against slavery. His dad was very against the institution, and that influenced him. His dad's name was Owen Brown, by the way. He was raised in Ohio, and he came to be exposed to a lot of the moral and ethical arguments against slavery that impacted his beliefs. So throughout his life, he worked in multiple uh, trades. He was a farmer at one point, he worked in tanning, land speculation. He often faced financial difficulties, which could have contributed to his lack of, uh, his lack of empathy with the idea of like plantation owners losing out on the income. He was married twice. His first wife died in 1832, and then he later married Mary Ann Day. He had 13 children with her. So he became especially committed to abolitionism during the 1830s and 40s as he was involved with the Underground Railroad. As he was helping individuals who were enslaved achieve freedom. Uh, in Bleeding, Kansas, in the mid-1850s, he moves his family to the Kansas Territory, and he's there to support anti-slavery settlers. And while he's there, there's a lot of violent conflict. He gets into conflict with uh, pro-slavery settlers, and he leads an attack against pro-slavery forces called the Potawatomi uh, Massacre in 1856. Okay, now <clears throat> John Brown uh, planned the raid on Harper's Ferry, believing that insurrection was the key way to overthrow the institution of slavery. So he created a plan to seize the armory at Harper's Ferry and to incite a slave rebellion. Now the main problem with this plan was that a lot of locally enslaved people were not willing to help. They were not willing to join the cause. Okay, so him and 21 followers, they launched their attack. At first they were able to successfully capture the armory, but then after a two day standoff, Brown is captured and he is defeated by U.S. Marines that were led by Robert E. Lee. Yes, the same Robert E. Lee who goes on to be the top leader uh, for the Southern Army in the Civil War. Okay, he's quickly tried and convicted of treason, murder, and inciting slave insurrection. And he's executed on December 2nd, 1859. So the reason why this is important to understand is that he had a large impact on the tension between the North and South. Uh, he contributed to the outbreak of the Civil War as a lot of Southerners were really angry with what John Brown had done, and they were worried that there were going to be other Northerners that would mimic his actions. So in the South, they viewed him as a dangerous fanatic, while some in the North viewed him as like a martyr, and they celebrated him. So he still remains a controversial figure in American history today. He's celebrated for his uh, passion in trying to end slavery and overthrow the institution. Uh, there's some controversy around his use of violence and willingness to die for his beliefs. There have been historians who have said that he was ahead of his times, though, in his commitment to achieving equality and to getting rid of slavery, as we can see today how awful an institution that was at the time, and John Brown recognized that.